King Jesus, we hail you. The ruler of the whole universe, we magnify you. Let's lift those hands unto the Lord and say, Lord, we surrender all to you. You are the Lord, our rock. You are the Lord, our root. You are the Lord, our source. We thank you today. We have not come with anything fanciful. We have just come in the simplicity of faith to magnify you and to worship you here today. If all that we're able to do is to praise you and praise you adequately and appropriately, we are confident that you'll be satisfied with us. Oh Lord, we lift our hands unto you in worship and in surrender. Thank you, Rock of Age. With my hand lifted up and my heart filled with praise. Is there something you remember you want to thank the Lord for? Is there something that quicken in your heart and say, indeed, I need to thank him? Leave those voices unto him and say, Father, I thank you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for X, Y, Z. I thank you for my life. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for provision. I thank you. I thank you. Please, let's give him quality worship. We've done so well so far. But I sense the Lord wants more from you and I. There's an atmosphere for miracles. There's an atmosphere for deliverance here today. Let's just carry to it, not because of man, but because of God. The Lord is bringing restoration unto certain lives right now. There are people in your life that you want God to restore and restore properly. The Lord is working. He is here. Is the Lord our rock. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Thank him. Thank you for all his mercy. Oh, we give you glory, Lord, and we magnify you. Hallelujah. Oh, to you, Lord, be the glory. Jesus, most wonderful name we have given thanks. Before we sit down, you don't know exactly what your neighbor is going through or has gone through. But I want you to just pray a prayer. It's going to be two-dimensional prayer for your neighbor. You don't need to hold your hand. The Lord knows to your left and to your right. Lord, I thank you for my neighbor. I thank you for your promises. I thank you because this man, this woman is not going away from here the same. Minister to your neighbor right now. Father, I thank you for my neighbor. I thank you, Lord, for your promises for him. I thank you, Lord, for your promises for her. And I'm confident, oh Lord, that he is not living here the same. You're beginning something new, oh God. There shall be no loss in his life. There shall be no loss in her life. Lord, I know I came here with one another, but Lord, you are stirring my heart to minister to my neighbor, stirring my heart to minister to my sister, to my brother around about me. Oh God of heaven and earth, show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty, oh God. Do that which only you can do for him, Lord. He needs your help. She needs your help, Lord. I sense that she needs your intervention, oh God. 
And so, Father, please intervene in his life. Intervene in our life. Do that which only you can do, Lord God. We have come here as a family, Lord God. You have said, bear each other's body and fulfill the love of Christ. And that's what we've come to do, Lord God. We've got nothing of ourselves. All that we have is of you and from you. And unto you we shall return. And before we return unto you, we shall return the praise first of all unto you. And so, O oh Lord our God, remember my dear one near me. Remember my dear one near me there. And show yourself faithful, O oh God. We magnify you, Lord, because your word is forever true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring your prayer to a close. In Jesus' marvelous name we are prayed. I thought our amen would be louder than that. We are praying on the basis of the faithfulness of God. That's why we are able to say, today that will be your song because the faithfulness of the Lord shall manifest in our lives the month of October you will experience his faithfulness like never before oh he will show himself strong unto you let every heavy body be lifted right now in the name of the Lord Jesus weights be lifted weights of sickness be lifted Ways of depression be lifted. Ways of death be lifted. Oh, you will sing, he has lifted me. That will be your song in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Give me all the honor and the glory. Jesus, most wonderful name, we have worshipped and prayed. Hallelujah. God bless you. May be seated. God bless you. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for how far he has um, helped us in this month. And our eyes are upon him that he will help us even all the more. In the name of Jesus. Indeed, is the greatest, is the highest, is the everything, and his name is Jesus. So I'll be talking to you on the title Jesus today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You can extend it and say the name of Jesus. Amen. John chapter 11, and I read verse 20, and I read verses 28 and 29. John 11, verse 20, and then verses 28 and 29. Verse 20. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. 
verse 28. And when she had said these things, that was conversation of Martha with the Lord Jesus, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose and quickly uh, she arose quickly and came to Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. The hearing of a name is more than a means for identification. It comes with deep emotions, either for good or for bad. We read that as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, Somebody mentioned the name. It could have been anybody else that was mentioned. It would not have aroused and would not have caused the same kind of response from this precious woman. And I pray that for the rest of your life, you will hear Jesus coming into your situation. Because that hearing, because this is a month of good news. And there is no news greater than the news of the name Jesus. That's why we were told in Matthew 121, And you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall deliver his people from their sins. But it's also important that we receive a name well. Uh, we receive a name is connected to the prevailing situation in our lives. I'm sure that if you are very hungry, and somebody mentioned the name of a particular restaurant where you enjoy the food, something will happen. And so, I will quickly look at the name of Jesus in various situations and circumstances of life. Four of them I will look at quickly and we will pray. Number one, the name Jesus in time of joy. The name Jesus in time of joy. I lovingly and humbly challenge you, people of God, that when you have good news, whose name comes to mind first? It should be Jesus. It should not be that I need to quickly go and tell my husband, go and tell my wife, tell my parents, tell my children, tell my lover, tell my friends. The first that should come to your mind should be that name, Jesus. And it's very easy for us to overlook Luke chapter 17, the story of the ten lepers. And there have been so many preachings on that particular passage of the scripture. But I probably know that the nine lepers, immediately that they saw that their situations were changing, they had other people in mind, except for the one that had Jesus in mind. It might not be that they're completely ungrateful, but they are, the Bible says. But the truth of the matter is that they forgot Jesus. In your time of blessing, may you not forget Jesus. So. That, that will be the first name that will come to your mind. When there is an increment in pay for you at work. When there is an ordinary excess tax that you paid. And your HMRC decided to refund you. I'm sure there are many bills that are standing. And you quickly pick your phone and call the man or call the woman and say, Ah, come and see, we've been delivered. The first one should be in your heart before you call him and say, Ah, what? Jesus. Let that be. I know that name has been abused. In fact, one of the names that have been most underutilized or most wrongly used. But when the Lord spoke to me and I said, I should speak about it, I said, name of Jesus. This is very straightforward. But by the time he started speaking unto me, even myself, I recognized that there is a long way to go. And all these people anointed by the special grace of God were able to pick clearly, truly indeed, that truly that name is the name we must honor here. Please, don't forget Jesus. Don't forget him. When... It looks as if it's your power that gave you that breakthrough. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 made it very clear. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. 
He says that, and when you get unto the land, Deuteronomy 8, 8 and, and you shall remember the Lord your God. You shall remember, for it is he who gave you power to what? To make wealth. Mm, you won't forget Jesus. Especially in the midst of your celebration. Christmas is coming. And the common catchphrase and cliche is that Christ, uh, Christmas without what? Christ. We know. But even we that we celebrate it and we thought we are celebrating Christ in it, is that our daily experience? To let that name bubble in your heart all the time. In fact, this, person, this particular message affected me so much because you must have heard me many times that I don't because of my slant in life about respect for God and things of God, or generally respect for people that I've translated unto God, I seldom call him that name directly. You probably you have heard me call him the Lord Jesus. Or I said the Lord. But the Lord challenged me. That he's given us that name. Call him directly. Some of you have been very free with that name. I have not. So maybe the message is for me. So you hear me calling that. Because today, the only prayer we shall pray will be a cry of Jesus. And I'm expecting shackles to be broken. I'm expecting chains to lose. I'm expecting mercy to be given to somebody here today. So use that name freely. Not disrespectfully, but use it freely. He's giving us the name. When we see him face to face, I'm not sure whether that's the name we'll be calling him in heaven. In another place, if you go back to the revelations, many names given unto him. Another place they saw, they call him the faithful one. Another one, they call him the king of kings and the lord of lords. His names are inexhaustible. But his proper name, actually, is the name of Jesus. And we shall call that name in our time of joy. Amen. Number two, the name Jesus in time of trouble. And I would be surprised if I need to preach this one to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, the time of trouble, we better remember the name Jesus. Amen. You've had multiple of sermons, and if you've not, go back, go on the internet, and at the geo, many stories that's given. I've got my own story. Well, let me share a story that you have had. Gotten on a bridge, a, there was a truck coming on the other side, and it's all these single lane bridges. Many of you may not have come across them. If you're a city dweller, I live a little bit in a rural area, and there are plenty of those narrow bridges. Unwinding road. Anytime I was passing through, I, I'm passing through them, my husky, because you don't know a vehicle that is coming, and there's no place to maneuver. That was the bridge they were between two towns back in Nigeria and southwestern part. And they have entered the narrow bridge, and the other truck had entered the narrow bridge. No time to do anything. I was in such a situation, it was not a narrow bridge. That was 1980, should be 83, 84. Uh, the Lord helps me with it. I was on Kotangora Road. Anybody that know Kotangora in Nigeria? Driving my beetle car all the way down. I was coming from Kaduna. I slept over in Kaduna, coming from, driving all the way from Meduguri. <laughs> Some of you are saying, are you crazy? If you know the place. How many of you know Meduguri in Nigeria? All right. It's one of the most extreme northeastern parts. So Meduguri to Kano was about seven hours. Roads were good in those days. And I was peddling on my little beetle. Got to, anyway, this thing, Kano, Kano to Kaduna, which was about another two hours, there about maybe two and a half. Anyway, took off early on. Uh, following day in Kaduna, and I was heading down at a bend. A truck was coming. It was a wide road. Just, to, just, just brought that back to me. What God has deliverance I've enjoyed. I hope you are remembering yours as I'm saying this one. The truck was coming. He just decided to leave. He stayed right in the middle of the road. It was at a bend. I had two options run into the truck or take the ditch. You probably knew which one I took. I took the ditch. And you know, uh, God will keep us. When I ran into the ditch and the car somersaulted a few times, when I came out, my two shoes were cleanly removed in an accident. Whatever took my shoe, I didn't, took my feet, I didn't take my feet. 
<laughs> so unless we think deep, we won't know how to cleanly, including the socks. Clean. I stood barefooted. I was in a ditch. There's no way. So I clambered out. The only thing I took at that time, I will give you the figures. <laughs> I took my, as a black, my father's black, old case. Some of you have seen it. They're close like that. Uh, you know them. They're close like that. And that's a buckle that you use. I still have one brown one or two. Inside that, I'll tell you the amount. 1984. I had 3,000 naira in it. Was that small money? <laughs> Labor of my moonlighting as a young doctor. In my head at least was correct to remember that was I took that. <laughs> Got to the roadside, back on down the truck, took me back to Kaduna. Rest the story. At least I'm here today. I don't know why I got to tell you that story. Our daddy mentioned, our spiritual father mentioned that they were himself and the driver, they were right there. So, in their own case, they prank to choose because a bridge was a bridge. And the only thing, you know the story now, the only thing that came out of their mouth was what? And they found themselves on the other side. Yes, Pastor. Uh, one of our pastors, I won't mention his name, that used to joke with that. He, I don't know, it's so funny. So it's not so funny, so it's so funny to him. He said, I was a man like that, I was in trouble. The first thing that came out of his mouth was your robot name for the God of Thunder. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a believer. <laughs> yes. What is inside you that we want? Fill your heart with the name what? Uh, you, are not, you are not calling that. Because you call that a plenty way. Fill your heart with the name what? Jesus. Because in time of trouble, that name will deliver you. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. Because he said that this sign shall follow them that believe, isn't it? He said, For in my name they shall cast out devils mm. and do many other things he mentioned there. They will speak with new tongues. When they lay their hands on the sick, the sick shall all in his name. Finally, on that point, so that we can, does not need to be a long service. I'm confident in the Lord that Father wants to do something special today, irrespective of you and me. Because that's the way he does it. Um, Mark chapter 10. There was a man there, you know the story very well, verse 46. Mark chapter 10, verse 46, all the way to 52. Very, very instructive. Very instructive. Uh, if it's one of the stories that I first learned in the Bible. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho, Jesus, that was our Lord, and his disciples and a great multitude also were there. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Next verse, please, quickly. And when he heard, hallelujah, and when he, and when he, you have heard today that Jesus is in the house. Oh, Pastor, what are you talking about? That's our problem sometimes. Every Sunday is the same and not necessarily the same. He's announcing his own presence here today. That's why I send this message to you. Oh, I know where two or three are gathered in my name is always there. Don't you know Jesus can be somewhere and people will not know it? I mean, the fact that he's here does not mean that he is here for somebody. But today he will be here for you. Amen. So you will hear Jesus as well. There were many sick on that day, on that road. But only one man heard what he should hear. He heard what he should hear. And when he heard that it was, so he, he was blind, so he did not what? Talk now. He did not? But he what? You are here now. You may not see, but you have. Situation the same. Situation the same. He began to cry out and say, what was the first word on his mouth? Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. That day, to prove to him that that name worked, God allowed opposition to stop him. God, you came in here today. I don't know why I'm repeating that. Burden. Somebody, you have brought heavy load here. You have labored under heavy load. 
But that name will remove the burden. Mm. And when people are calling Jesus around you, don't keep quiet. That's what I wrote down here. Because surely, I mean, how did you know it was Jesus? People would say, ah, it's Jesus. You know, people will be murmuring and everything. But the man said, you can murmur, but I will shout. Number three, when you need the name Jesus. You need the name Jesus in time of confusion. And also, there's no better time when we need that name than when we are confused. Confusion is very common in life. Daily confusion. Leave this city, go another one. Stay in this city, get this job, don't get this one. Um, whatever. Marry this one, don't marry that one. Uh, speak to this one, don't. This confusion is natural to human beings, sadly. But there's a name that resolves confusions. Because there are little decisions in our lives, there are big decisions. What cost to study and all the rest of that. Even what to eat, what not to eat. Don't you know it's a big decision sometimes when you look at chocolate and you need to decide whether to eat or not eat? Ah, okay. <laughs> For some, it's a big decision that requires fasting, which immediately resolves the problem. There are moments, brethren. But there was instance I saw in the scripture before I begin to round up that point. It was in Mark chapter 4. We saw trouble there, but I saw confusion there. And I will leverage on that to make sure, mention something that is common to us as believers. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. That was the incident, Mark 4, 35. That was the incident when they were on the sea and a great storm arose. You remember that story in the Bible? But they were confused. You know what confused them? There was storm. Jesus was sleeping. I might not be Jesus. There are some times that things are happening everywhere. Seems to have touched you alone. Oh, you may have touched everybody. Does not touch a particular person. They bring confusion. They brought confusion, which actually do not call, does, will not call confusion from, I will call it contradiction, and I will leverage onto that. Christianity is full of what we call contradictions. Contradictions. Why have I done so much and have not gotten the result? Why have I called on the name of the Lord and does not see, it does not seem to be working? Why will Jesus be in the boat with me and there will be storm? Contradictions. But when we have contradictions, we go very academic and very philosophical rather than just go to Jesus. We come with every other reason. Uh, people of Israel, they knew that very well in Judges chapter 6 verse 13. Judges chapter 6 verse 13. I mean, the man cried out unto the Lord when the angel came and said, Israel will be delivered from bondage. He said, what are you talking about? He said, if I, the man said, God is with you, great man of God. The man laughed, God with me? If God is with us, why is my situation like this? Contradiction. If God is with me, why was my loved one taken? If God was with me. Why is it that I've still been in this situation for so long? Confusion. It's a natural thing to In fact, common amongst us as believers. Matthew chapter 11 verses 1 to 5. Confusion. The man that knew Jesus, before anybody knew him, before anybody, you know him now, who was he? You know him, who was he? John the Baptist. He said on that day, the spirit came upon him and said, ah, everybody, behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. He said, we've been waiting for him. People were looking, you are the prophet, which Jesus? He said, that's the man. His disciple released unto them. He said, I finished my job. The same man started doubting. You remember the story? When he was in prison. Contradictions. But today, whichever contradiction will be resolved. Amen. Do you hear me clearly? Because in every situation I could tell for you, it was resolved. They didn't have a meeting when Jesus was sleeping in the midst of the storm. When Jesus was in the boat with them and their boat was, you know, was being tossed left, right, and center. But they went to Jesus. You will go to Jesus today. Eventually, in Judges chapter 6 and further to chapter 7, the is Israel was eventually delivered. And for John the Baptist, 
he finished his ministry all the same. And Jesus, before he left, that if this man will go this way, it does not matter. But let it be written that of all the prophets that have written, there are what, what? There is none greater. You know prophets that, that, that have risen before him? When a prophet is greater than Elijah. A prophet is greater than who? Elisha. Greater than Isaiah. He must be a great prophet. I mean, Isaiah prophesied. Isaiah prophesied. He prophesied the coming of Isaiah where nobody was thinking. Spot on. He prophesied the end of the earth. He prophesied rapture. He prophesied the new heaven and the new earth. He prophesied. And yet, this man experiencing contradiction. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said he was greater. Your own contradiction will be resolved as well. Amen. Nobody will laugh at you again. Amen. No, it's over. Amen. It's a brand new dawn for you. Amen. Because the mercy of the Lord will speak for you right now. But I reprove you so is the name. Jesus. So when you are feeling the contradiction today, please don't pray long prayers. You didn't hear Bartimaeus pray any prayer more than what? Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And the Lord then said, okay, let me tease you a little bit. What should I do for you? He said, ha. Ah. Didn't you say I was blind? The Lord said, okay, I knew you were blind. I just wanted to say it. So today, he may not even ask you what do you want. He knows what you want. Because while we are here speaking, he said he will answer us. And the contradiction and confusion in your life will go. Amen. Number four, the name Jesus for future security. When the future looks bleak, there is someone in your future. And it's Jesus. He's there already. I find out that the easiest way to rope people in with false religion and cults is through promise of a secure future for them. All these cults, they will promise you. Some religion promises them when they get to their own heaven, they will give them, uh, how many virgins will they give them? Eh? Is it ten? Okay, seven, okay. Can you imagine the whole of heaven? I'm sorry. <laughs> but people bought into it because they want a secure future. But there's no future that is more secure than the one that Jesus Christ gives. Matthew chapter 19. One of the disciples challenged the Lord. Matthew 19, 27 to 29. Challenged him. He said, what's my future looking like? Uh, you don't need to show your hand. But I believe somebody in this room, you want greater certainty for your future. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Hey, thank you, Lord, for how far you brought my future. But uh, what I'm seeing, make it, let's agree to something better. Because if the trajectory of my life is like this, uh, uh, I'm not liking it. The milestone that I should have crossed, I've not crossed it. And even, even if the blessing comes now, it's looking late, but God can turn it around. It's in our future. That was what Peter was talking about unto the Lord. <laughs> oh, I love Peter. I love Peter. Jesus Christ said that uh, it's very hard even for the reed to enter the kingdom of God. And the Lord was preaching and telling them eternal truth. The man had something that he said it's good to say that. I've been following you for three years now. My shipping business, has completed, my fishing business is nearly run bankrupt. Don't be telling me that uh, we won't enter that kingdom. We have left all and followed you. Don't, it's too late. But follow God to the extent in which we say it's too late to go back. By the grace of God, some of us, we followed him toward the last limb. Where, what do I have to go back to? It has to be. Whom do I want to face? Family, friends. After I've told them that I left all for him. What would be the greatest fool? They said, we told you. And they told me. And they told me. Right from close or not too close. They said, what is wrong with you? We are all believers. We are all Christians. 
Why are you not born into this and that? And uh, what is it? You've mixed madness with your Christianity. Ah, you won't go back. I won't go back. Amen. And many of them are actually waiting for us to turn back. Your Christianity should be to the extent that there is no, there is no option B. Because even here on earth, the consequences will be too grave. Whom do you go to? Whom do I go to now? But thank God, he will keep you, he will keep me. Amen. They follow him to that extent. We've left all. Therefore, is this the way we end? The next verse, please, if you may. Verse 28. So, somebody says so. so. Jesus said to them, when the Lord said assuredly, is the greatest word of saying, I know what I'm saying. The same word he used in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 5. He said, surely, surely. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, uh -huh, I would have told you. I mean, when a man that we know never lies was telling you, you can't swear. That's the closest. That's the very closest. And he said, what's wrong with you? I told you, it's me. Oh, upon my honor, I've gone to prepare a place for you. Upon my honor, I assure you that in the world to come, when I will sit on the throne of my glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones with me. Judging the twelve tribes. What an assurance. Another place he said, those that have left Father house, and, and many of us, we may not have left them physically. Some people have walked out of our life because of Jesus. Am I correct? But he said, we shall have multiple in reply. Proverbs verse 18, chapter 18, verse 10, I close with that. Hallelujah. Yeah, we'll pray and go. That name will work for us today. Amen. Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is... Uh, yeah, you will run into that name today. You will run into that name. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Save from future insecurity. Safe from their moments of confusion. Safe in the time of trouble. And safe to return glory to him when he blesses you. But above all, I've talked so much about making a clear cut decision for Jesus. Everything I'm talking about to you today is based on that fact that there was a day that I made that decision for him. Very clear cut. Share my test I share my conversion testimony with you again. You've had it many times. It was around that same time that I was busy trying to make money. Why not? I just got dissatisfied with my life. There's a church on the way to where I normally go and work an extra hour in the evening. And uh, Sunday morning, usually we buy plenty of papers. And after the hangover of previous night, we just talk. But this day, I just left my mates. I said, let me just stroll out. Took the car. I went to this church, Assemblies of God Church. And uh, in Kaduna, that was, at least I rededicated my life properly that day. I had a contact of him before, but that was the day I record as my real beginning of journey. And then preacher preached. I don't remember the message till tomorrow. I came out, tears streaming down my face. Saw myself going to hell. And I made this show that day. But prior to that, God has been telling me when I had an operation, which I shared with you last week, that I died on the table. The part of the story was that a little girl has been preaching to me and my mates. Did not know what happened to me because I didn't tell my friend when I came back home. He said, I heard you admitted in the hospital. I said, yes, I was. He said, that's what I've been telling you. If you are there, you'll have gone to hell. For the first time, I couldn't answer that girl. Oh, I knew Bible more than her. Which Bible was she talking about? I mean, I mean, I got the Dalsizan Prize in Bible study, age 11. I knew cover to cover. I'll be arguing with her. But she was going to heaven. I was not going. That day, she must have wondered something has happened. A few days after my incident, let today be your own too, if you have not made that decision. And if you have, God can bring you to a greater and deeper level of relationship. If you sense in your heart that things are not the way they ought to be, do you want to rise up with me as we pray? 
Halleluja. Thank you, Lord. You may dim a little bit for me, my own stage light, so that I can see people. You don't need to put on the full light. You can dim the stage light a little bit for me. With all our hearts focused on the Lord, if there's anyone, dim the stage light. <laughs> dim the stage light. Uh, oh, you can't dim this one. Okay, that's fine. Who is on light today? Don't worry. Ushers, just look out. If there's anybody in the house and you want to make a decision for Jesus, first time or a follow on, every one of us calling on the name of the Lord, please lift up your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you. Whether upstairs or that, or all eyes closed, all less bad, everybody communing with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This call specifically has gone out today because God wants to do something marvelous. If there's anybody in the house, I will wait for you. Just lift your hand wherever you are. Where you are, I want to pray for you. To start your journey. And then that name, more than ever before, will avail for you. If anybody raises their hand later on, oh well and good, I've done what I believe the Lord asked me to do. You may ask the ushers to give you a paper, fill it on, be good to see me after the service, I've got some other things to do. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is a good God. And the name Jesus is a powerful name. Mm. We mentioned four areas today. Which one was the first one that said the name will work for you? When you are second time, where you? and the third one, the final one, and the Lord is here to do all for you. I want you to lift your voices and first of all say, thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Lift your voices and just thank you right now. Keep not quiet, O oh people of God. Keep not quiet. Keep not quiet. Mm. By his grace and by his mercy, he has brought us thus far. He's a good God full of kindness, full of mercy. We give you worship and praise, O oh God. Thank you, Tana Rock of Ages. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For now, one prayer comes to my heart, and simple as I've admonished you earlier, for any and every situation that you may be going through, you will cry out, Jesus. And that same Jesus will appear to you. Amen. You will cry that name Jesus three times and I'm not giving unto that except I believe there's a nudge in my heart to ask us to do that. And after the third time, you will burst out in prayer to him. Some of you, you may need to pray in the Holy Spirit to connect and collect that which is your own. Have you heard me? And the Lord will perform his wonders. Amen. He will help you. Amen. So with one voice, we lift our voice and cry the name. Jesus. We cry the name. Jesus. We cry the name. Jesus. Lift your voices and cry unto him right now. Bartimaeus, the son of David, have mercy on me. You know the area that you want him to show up for you. You have been going through confusion. You know it. There's so much of contradiction in your life. 
you have thought left, you have thought right, you have planned this, you have planned that, but today is the time to come unto Jesus. He's been in your boat, it seems that like the boat is being rattled, but he is here to deliver from every form of things that are not, not joined together. That name that you have called, we appear to you in your time of trouble. We appear to you in a time of being oppressed and depressed and subjected unto the vagaries of the enemy. Today, Jesus, 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 the name above all names shall work for you right now. Jesus, 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 the Holy One of God, Jesus, the Mighty One, the awesome deliverer. We come with nothing, oh God. We call your name. Appear concerning uh, that daughter. Appear concerning that son. Appear, oh Lord, concerning that brother, that sister, that father, that mother. Every area of need, just say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Some of you may get to pray in the spirit because even your words may not be able to articulate all that you need to do. Jesus of Nazareth, the mighty and the holy one. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, we may not have word to describe all that we need to talk to you about. But we have your name, we have your name. Let your power appear to me in the means of the calling of your name. Pray for somebody dear to you, I beg you. Don't keep quiet. Pray concerning your situation. It might be that you are going on a particular journey. It might be a brother of yours that you have become concerned about. Just say, Jesus, when the centurion came unto the Lord, he came with that name in his heart. He said, my servant lies ill. And Jesus followed him. When you call Jesus, he follows. When you call Jesus, he follows. And he will follow you to that your brother. Follow you to that your sister. Follow you to that your daughter. Follow you to that your son. Jesus, to those your grandchildren, he will follow you today. Jesus, 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 the mighty one of Israel. Oh, hear us, O oh Lord, today. We have no other name. We have no other one. You alone, O oh God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He will follow you to that your husband. He will follow you to that your wife. And resolve the matter in their life. He will follow you to that your situation. Follow you in that situation of progress because his name is higher than every other. Thank you, thank you, Father. Jesus, marvelous name, we are praying. The Lord will arise on your behalf, and the enemies will scatter. Internal enemies will bow. Some of us, our enemies are not without their inside. External enemies, they will scatter. And you will go free. Children are good at calling daddy. You will call Jesus today. Children are good at calling mommy, mommy, mommy. When they call you like that, don't you go and respond? Do you first ask what is it? Especially if they are little children of which the Lord said we should be converted to be. Did you read that in your Bible? Unless you are converted. So go back to being a little child. When a little child calls unto the parents, they don't ask questions. You jump up, don't you? You rush there, don't you? Sometimes they only need to cry. Today, one more time as you call that Nephi and I pray for you, the Lord will come to your situation. And this time, I will not limit it to three. As long as you want to call that name until I have a little of a prompt on the inside to stop you, just call that name, pray in the spirit, pray, because I've got nothing of my own self to give you today. I've just brought you to Jesus. I've just invited you to come and meet him all over again. I've just reintroduced his name to you. And he will have to do it because he never fails. He's always faithful. 
So that which seems insurmountable, you will call that name. As you begin to call that name, there will be a shift in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your voice and say, Jesus, 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 Son of the living God, Jesus, the Son of David, Jesus, my deliverer, Jesus, my rock, Jesus, Jesus, cry out in agony unto him, cry out in your situation unto him. You have come unto the mount of the Lord. We have not come unto the mount that burns with physical fire. We have come into the garden of the innumerable company of angels. The Lord is here. The hosts of heaven, they are here. And I've said, Lord, today is your day. Of course, every day is your day, but especially you say, dedicate today to my name. Let them call my name and let me show up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Son of the living God, rock of ages, Jesus. If you know somebody that is in serious need of help, call the name and the Lord will follow you as his word unto that man, follow you as his word to that woman. Oh Lord God of Israel, Oh Jesus, Jesus, Son of the living God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Rebo Shatayala Bosende Broshkera. Oh, you need to step up, Lord. You need to step out. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Mandala Bose Braka Shedele Bosketea. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you. We honor you, Jesus, our Lord. Jesus, marvelous name, we are praying. Eternal Father, we thank you that all this depends on your faithfulness. You may declare, if it were not so, I won't tell you. Truly, truly, I say to you, those were your words. We've taken you by your words today. That's why that embargo, that limitation over your life to move forward, by the power in the name of Jesus, that embargo is lifted today. Yeah. At the mention of the name of Jesus, the Bible says every knee shall bow. Those things that he that will be standing before you like giants today at the mention of that name. Let them fall for your sake in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we shall go free. Our eternity is settled. Your future is settled in the name of the Lord Jesus. And out of trouble, the Lord will extricate us. And He will free us permanently. The month of October shall be the month of good tidings for you indeed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Long awaited letter will land this month. Long awaited news, they will arrive this month. A new level that you desire concerning your spiritual work. The Lord will lift you there this month in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and prosper. Go and enlarge. Fill the land. And let the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. Lord, we thank you. And one more time in thanksgiving we say, Jesus. Amen.